This is a really important message that I need to deliver this week. Since the beginning of this ministry, I have stressed the importance of getting our houses in order and submitting to our Father in Heaven. It's very possible that you have gained some conviction from these messages and you desire to get your life right with our Father. I pray that that is true for many that watch these videos. I pray that many people in this world are recognizing what time it is in the world right now and realizing that they don't have any time to play games. That's the reason why I make videos like the one last week that emphasize what is really happening in the world and how close we are to fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So if Father is reaching out to you and touching your heart that you need to come to him and you are making the right decision to answer his call and seek him truly, you must realize that there is a lot of work to do. What I want to do is to help you and provide some guidance and direction so that this mission you are on can be successful. Also, so the devil along with his ways and strategies are blocked and you are ready for our master when he calls. It's time to be ready. Let's talk about how. Let's begin. Okay, so the way the world is today, though agendas are very deceptive and wicked and walls seem to be closing in on us, there are many blessings that we can see today in regards to getting closer to our Father. Let me explain. Before, when people felt that they were going to get right with God, their first thought and action was to go to church, not pray, not read their Bible. None of those actions were primarily first. The first action was mostly to go to church. And this should honestly be the last action, not the first. How can you go to a church if you don't know what the Bible says? How do you know if what you're hearing is true? How do you know if the church is giving the true gospel, not watered down? If you don't know scripture for yourself, how can you discern for yourself what is true or false? Just because a building is labeled church doesn't actually mean they are truly and sincerely serving our Father in heaven. But either way, this was the action that most people were directed in taking for at least a century, especially here in the United States. And like I just said, this is not the way. So what happens is a few things. People start believing that their relationship with God is growing because of their attendance at church. People also get pushed away from God because they feel like church is false, the pastors are false, they are judged by the congregation, etc, etc. Also, people feel that their connection to God is found within the church. This is the way that they hear from God, or many other things. Either way, because most of these people have made church an idol, there is no real growth in their relationship with the Most High. That is because we do not go to church to find God. We should actually go to church, which is actually an assembly, to praise and worship the Most High and fellowship with like-minded believers. But this understanding has been lost. But what I was getting at is that the way the world is today is actually a blessing for those trying to find God because the churches are closed for the most part. So that first action isn't really possible. People have been forced to seek him in a different way and many are finally being pushed into the right actions. But what are those right actions? What is it that you must do to find Elohim and get close to him? The answer isn't very complex and it really isn't that hard, but the way that the world is today, it can be very complex if there is not any guidance. So I want to first explain what you must do and then give some words of caution and warnings. Now first, if you want to seek our creator and follow him, first thing you must do is you must talk with him. Psalms chapter 145 verses 18 and 19 says, Yahuwah is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He does the desire of those who fear him, and he hears their cry and saves them. So know this first, if you call upon him, he will be there for you. Know that he hears you and that he desires this relationship with you very much. So you must come to him in truth, love and fear him. Fear just does not mean be scared of him, but have respect for him as our creator and place everything in his hands and believe fully on him. When you talk with him, repent of your sins and your past ways and ask him to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. So first thing you must do is talk with him. 
This isn't some complicated prayer or saying the right eloquent beautiful words in the most perfect way. There isn't some specific prayer that you must say. Get rid of any thought that tells you that this is what he wants. He wants you to talk to him from your heart. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. After repenting, ask Father to guide you and teach you. Ask for his Ruach, his Holy Spirit to be upon you and to lead you. He wants you to grow in him so you can serve him. Ask and you will receive. Yeshua says in Luke chapter 11 verse 9, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Now listen, this is important. Don't misinterpret these scriptures. The Most High is not a genie. Don't seek him merely for riches or worldly success. Don't try to use him to seek success in this world. If this is your reason to find God, he will not be there for you. This is not what he wants from you. When he doesn't answer these prayers, don't lose faith in him. You are coming at him wrong and desiring him with an insincere heart. Like James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 says, You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. So don't come to him for him to serve you. It's actually the opposite. He wants you to serve him. And you will find that if you come to him in this right attitude, desiring to serve him and do his will, you will experience growth in your relationship with him. I find that most people struggle with their relationship with him because they are trying to use him, but they won't allow him to use them. People want all the benefits from him, all the assurances he provides, all the love, joy, peace, patience he gives. People want all of that, but don't want to actually serve him and live for his will. It's selfish. When you are finding God, you are like the prodigal son or daughter coming home ready to become right with our father and serve him as his child. You are not bringing him in the life you have for yourself. You are bringing your life to him and allowing him to have his way. This is an important mentality you must enter in the relationship with, so I will repeat it. When you are finding God, you are like the prodigal son or daughter coming home ready to become right with our father and serve him as his child. You are not bringing him in the life you have for yourself. You are bringing your life to him and allowing him to have his way. Now, after you have come to him and spoken with him, the next thing you must do is seek to know him. Like I was saying earlier, this is not done in church. You don't need a pastor to know him. You need to search him and seek him through his word. The Holy Scriptures have all you need in order to grow in him. And reading it should be our priority. This book has everything we need to know about him. And if you have his spirit, he will guide you and teach you but you have to be willing to learn from him. Now, what do most people do? Some people start in the beginning and try to read it like it's a chapter book. But by the time they get to Leviticus, if they get that far, they are done and didn't understand very much. And most of the time, they will keep repeating this activity over and over. Or others jump around picking different scriptures and chapters. They open up their Bible and just read the first place that they look. This should not be done either. Here's some guidance that I can give and trying to read your Bible. My first piece of advice is to start in the book of John. Let me explain why. You need Yeshua. No matter what, you need him and to have a relationship with him. He is our only way to Father. You need to understand him and believe in him. If you have not done this, in the end, you will not be saved 
and you will not be redeemed. So the first thing you must understand is the gospel. You cannot come to the Father or know our Father without Yeshua. Yeshua said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. That's John chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. So because of this, you must read, know, and believe in the gospel. So because of its importance, I would start there. The book of John is a great book to read first. Then after you read John, I will go to Matthew and read another account. After this, I will go to Acts and then read the rest of the New Testament straight through, Romans through Jude. Here is a little PDF I created that can help provide guidance. You'll find the link in the description box. Now, after you finish Jude, stop when you get to Revelation. This is a book that should be read independently, just like Psalms and Proverbs. Those books should not be part of your reading plan. It's good to read at least one chapter of Psalms and Proverbs per day. Saying the Psalms out loud is a great practice as well, because they're all about praise and worship. After you finish the New Testament, go back to Genesis and read the Bible straight through. When you get to Leviticus, when you get to the law, it gets a little complicated. You want to understand his Torah, but if you find yourself getting off track, move straight to Numbers and you'll be back in the history of Israel and finish reading the Old Testament. This is a roadmap I use, and it has been quite useful for myself, my children, and others that I have guided in this way. It's not a rule or a way you have to read. It's just guidance and suggestions to help you. Don't get on that New Testament is more important than the Old Testament thing. Don't only read the New Testament. It's all important, and the more you read it, the more you allow His Spirit to speak to you. I also recommend reading at least a chapter per day at minimum. Now, this is my most basic advice, but considering the times that we are in and how fast the walls are closing in on us, I would recommend you read more, maybe two or three at least. The more you can read per day, the better. But listen, it's not just about reading. It's also about comprehending, understanding, and applying. So do not just engage in behavior for the sake of saying you are reading. Take your time with it so that he can talk to you through his word. But you must know you must read his word. This is not something you can avoid. You cannot know him without knowing his word. This is how you grow in your relationship with him. This is how you understand him better and what he desires for us. This is how you know how he wants you to live and how he doesn't want you to live. You must read his word. But on top of knowing and reading and understanding, you must also apply it in your lives. You must be a doer of the word. I personally know people that have started to read their Bible and they're doing very well with the action of reading, but they are not applying what they are reading to their lives. You must apply it. Apply his guidance, apply his doctrine, apply his commands to your life. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. That's James chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. Apply the word to your life. Now, what Bibles do I recommend reading? I read a few Bibles. I own a few, the Hallelujah Scriptures and the Sefer. I love these Bibles that have taken out the pagan derived words from our English language. I love using his original Hebrew name. This is my personal preference and this is why I read from these Bibles. The Hallelujah Scriptures is always willing to send you a copy. They don't sell the Bibles, but please donate to them if you would like one. They are very much about our Father's business. But I also read King James and New King James. And my sister in the faith reads the Amplified Version. I have a few Bibles on my desk. I won't tell you which ones to read, 
but I will tell you which ones not to read, and that's the New Living Translation and the New International Version for certain. Besides their translating being very liberal at times, not always giving the full strength of the scriptures, they have also removed whole verses of the Bible. To see this truth directly for yourself, I have made a small sheet for you to review. The link is in the description box. You will see that they completely remove verses. Any Bible that has removed scriptures should not be read from. Also, stay clear of the New World Translation that the Jehovah Witnesses use and the Message Bible, because they're just completely off. I have links to the Hallelujah Scriptures and the Sefer on my website as well. I also recommend using study Bibles because there's a lot of commentary in the Bibles that can help you with your reading. But again, the important thing to know is that you must start with his word. Now, let me just say a few things. Do not engage in activity just to make you feel like you're doing something. Don't deceive yourselves. If you're not going to search him to know him truthfully and intimately, don't even start, especially today. We are in the times before the rise of the Antichrist. The false prophet of Revelation is already moving around the world preparing the way for the Antichrist. They are preparing this one world religion. There is a high majority of Christian pastors and churches that will actually be ministers of this one world religion. They come in the name of Christ, which means Messiah, but they are actually speaking of the false one. So what they are doing is giving out watered down Christianity. It's the kind of Christianity that makes someone feel like they are moving towards God, but are in fact moving away from him. The God they are being introduced to does not fall in line with the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you need to be careful of what you are taking in. That's why it starts with reading his word. This watered down Christianity will make people feel like they are doing what God wants for them, but they are not getting anywhere close to him. If you're looking for God to only make you feel good, then you're not seeking him. You see, when we come to him, he exposes our sinful ways to us. He brings conviction and repentance. When we are born again, we are out with the old man and in with the new. We become new creations. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And so understanding this, we should understand that as we become closer with Messiah, we shall no longer be our former selves. But in this watered down Christianity, they will allow you to feel that you're following Father and becoming closer to him. But there is always a lack of conviction against sin and repentance. And that's what you need to stay away from. Beware of following all of the mainstream Bible study plans. Beware of all those books from the Christian bestsellers at Barnes and Nobles, all the acclaimed Christian pastors, the T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen's, Joyce Meyer, etc., etc. This is mainstream Christianity that leads to the Antichrist. Beware of all those many devotionals. First off, that is not a substitute for reading the word. And all it does is jump you around from verse to verse, book to book. It's not how we should read. Now, it's important to understand. In these books and devotionals and mainstream content, it's not that you are hearing false things all the time, because that's not always the case. You see, there is false teaching, but there is also distraction teaching. Distraction teaching is when they teach you about all the things that are tickling your ears, all the things that make it easy to love and submit to God, all the things you want to hear, but they are really distracting you from what he wants from you distracting you from the call to put away your former lusts, passions, and desires, distracting you from following his commands and what they even are, distracting you from understanding that you are not to be of this world and attached to it, distracting you from Bible prophecy and just how close we are to Messiah and also how close we are to the Great Tribulation. They may not be teaching anything wrong about God. It's just that they are not teaching him in full. They are giving you the truth that is edited. It's not complete. That is why you must seek him for yourself. Read his word for yourself. I have many videos on this channel that can help give you guidance and instruction, but they are not to be made as your main source. This channel is meant to bring people closer to him through provoking thought, removing falsehoods, exposing things done in darkness, raising the alarm and promoting urgency that time is running out on our ignorance and disobedience. But it is not your source, just a resource. 
Our relationship with Father is personal, and we are not all on the same mission. Do not compare your walk with others. Let others be an example for you and help you with your convictions. You must be alert and aware of the enemy, because at the time that you are trying to come closer to Father and Him coming to you, the enemy is also moving in trying to draw you in. This is a battle for our souls, and you must be vigilant in the fight. Too many people are so cavalier about their souls. You know, people take making money seriously. They take their family serious. Their relationships are serious. But when it comes to father and growing a relationship with him, most people won't say it out their mouths that is not serious to them. But their actions really prove it. The enemy loves this. Our father does not. If you're trying to find our father, to be ready for him when he comes, to be found acceptable in his sight, you must make him the priority over everything else. Get rid of all idols. You must make him important to you. Put that same emphasis and more that you've placed on getting money or making your family happy or your wife, husband, girlfriend, or boyfriend happy. Use that same emphasis and more on him. If you do not, the enemy will take your lackadaisical approach and validate you with his false system because your lukewarmness is what he desires. The thing people don't realize is is that Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and he imitates the things of our Father, but he does this with incompleteness and falsehoods. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. It's important to understand that, because everything you hear about God isn't always about the Most High, but in fact, it's many times about Satan masquerading as the Most High, making himself the one worshipped over Yahuwah. So if you do not fully understand our Father, his commands, his ways, his desires for us, his requirements for us, what he wants us to do and not do, what he wants us to stay away from, what he wants to keep our hearts from, how he wants us to depend and trust in him, if you do not understand him, in today's world, you run a huge risk of unknowingly being directed into the worship of Satan and his false messiah because Satan is masquerading as an angel of light, and he comes to you in whatever way you will take him. And his false way makes it easier for a self-absorbed, selfish, loveless generation to accept him. But get this, we are not to fit the Most High in our lives. We are in fact supposed to fit our lives around the Most High. So if you do not want to be deceived, you must learn about him through his word and yielding to his spirit. You must allow his spirit his Ruach, to direct and lead your lives. This is the true gift he has provided us through belief in Yeshua, and we must never take it for granted or reject it. He has given us a helper, a teacher, and guide that directs us through this world so that we can know our Father and do his will. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. John chapter 14, verse 26. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and deliver it to you. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. He is our gift, and we must yield to him, listen to him, and let him guide and lead us. If you want to learn more about the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, please watch this video right after this one. Listen, the world is moving towards the introduction to the Antichrist. He is currently making his way on the scene, and if you're not ready, you will be enticed through your flesh to worship and celebrate this man. You will be directed to accept his solutions and direction for this world. You will most likely justify evil in your life because it will just be easier to do than stand out amongst the majority and stay committed to Father. If this is not what you want for yourself, you must make the decision now to submit to Father, to repent and to talk to him to seek him and search him through his word and let his Ruach, his spirit, guide you. You need to make him your priority. Enough of that laid back acceptance of God in your life. Enough of people feeling like, yeah, I want to have a relationship with God, but it's gonna take time. 
No, it's I want to have a relationship with God and it will start today. No more of that laid back worldly Christianity. Stop with all that super churchy Christian mumble jumbo. You need hardcore strength and conviction that will lead you to hardcore faith that will prepare you for what's ahead. You want to find God? He isn't found in the ways and traditions of this world. Stop looking for feel-good messages that don't convict you of sin. Stop looking for some worldly pastor to validate your lukewarmness. Stop trying to please man and be in sync with man. Be in sync with Father. We are all responsible for our choices in life. No one will stand before Father in your place except Yeshua, because He is our advocate if we believe in Him and follow Him. I know that there are many people right now that desire to get right with Father. I made this video to let you know you don't need any man to help you do this. It's not a group relationship. It's a personal relationship. You are not presented to Father through church. You are presented to Him either through your personal faith in Messiah or your lack of faith in Him. You do not want the latter. You do not need to follow famous pastors, go to the biggest churches, do a bunch of religious activities to earn your way in. You don't have to watch videos like this or listen to people like me. All you need is a sincere desire to serve and follow our Father, and you need action to fulfill that desire. All these other things are supposed to be resources, not sources. Beware of making anything an idol. Ministries like this are just here to give guidance, spread convictions, expose the enemy, etc. Churches are more for fellowship and worship with like-minded believers. Anything you do for Father should be done because you are led by His Spirit and not to prove religious worth or earning your blessings. That's worldly religion and He's not about that. So know this truly. You want to find God? Well, He's right here waiting. He has His arms stretched out waiting for you. He's here. All you need to do is to come to Him. Make sure you do and be ready because our time is almost up. Seek Him and you will find him and we will all be ready for him on his day be blessed okay thanks again for watching if this has blessed you please make sure to like it and please share this with others if you haven't done so already please make sure to subscribe to this channel elohim willing i upload every friday also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all of those who donate and contribute to this ministry. Please know that your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry, and they help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing, and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Make our Father the priority in your lives today and submit to Him. I love you all.